Good morning. What a great day to be alive. Today is October 27th. This is a Sunday early in the morning, about 6.30ish my time, and uh, just getting ready for the church service. So doing my daily reading, I'd like to share with you today. Coming out of Luke chapter 14, let's put on our helmets of salvation. How about it? Buckle up our chin straps. Get ready for the game today, the game of life the most important game that we could be in. It says this, if any man comes unto me and hate not his father and mother and his wife and his children and even his brothers and sisters, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That is in your Bible. That comes out of Luke 14, 26. What does that really mean? I mean, what is God telling us to do? That we're to hate every single person and hate ourselves? I mean, this is why it's so important to be involved in programs like we have. Let me get this on the screen here before I forget for a little bit. Crossingpass.org. Go to our website. Join our program. Read through the Bible with us. It's only twenty dollars. At sixty, about it's less than sixty-seven cents per day. Go on and make a monthly commitment. Be a part of our team, man. Join the program. We're going to talk today about what, commit, what commitment really means. What does commitment really mean? So listen up. The Bible is God's holy word. It is inherent in it. And with each and every verse contained within it is applicable to the lives of God's children. Yet that does not mean that the lesson provided by each verse will always be easily discerned. This is what we're talking about today. There are many verses that at first glance often leave the reader confused and conflicted. This verse from today's reading certainly fits in that category. So many people struggle with this verse and take this verse out of context. What is God really saying? Although Jesus' words seems relatively straightforward, they are deeply puzzling. He tells us we must hate, but his entire ministry is rooted in love. Beloved, let us love one another, for, if, for love is of God. If everyone that loves is born of God and knoweth God, he that loveth knoweth not God, for God is love. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and his disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother, and from that hour the disciple took her unto his own home. How are we supposed to reconcile with one another? Here is the beginning of the lesson today. In understanding this verse, context is everything. Jesus made this statement during a speech he gave to a crowd of curious, seeking, casual followers. These were people who, although they were drawn to him and his message, many today are drawn to Jesus. Everybody thinks they know Jesus. Everybody thinks they're going to heaven. I've been saved 45 years. I've never heard a person say, look, I'm going to hell. Everybody thinks they're going to heaven. But are you really going to heaven? Are you really committed? Are you really serving God through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ today? If you was to die today, do you know that you are going to go to heaven and be with God through your re personal relationship with Jesus? Listen to this. These were people who, although they were drawn to him in his message, did not have a realistic understanding of the level of commitment that would be required to follow Jesus. We're talking about the level of the commitment that you have to Jesus today. What is your level of commitment? On a scale of like one to 10, are you a minus one? Or are you a 10? Or where are you committed? How are you committed? What are you serving? 
Jesus was trying to emphasize to them the seriousness of committing to him. Among the things they most needed to understand was the fact that to follow him, they must put him first above all else. There is nothing in your life that is to be above your relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything follows after that. If he is not first, he is nothing to you. He must be first. He will not settle for anything less. He demands a commitment to love and to serve him first. He had to become the single most important thing in their world, even above their own families. This is that more than love that I talk about. It's not a codependent um, spirit that we forsake the Lord and Savior to do things that our children would want us to do, or our wives would want us to do, or our husbands. We set the standard. We set the commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we follow him in his word. Everybody and everything else will benefit and um, would benefit from that. So to follow him, their love and dedication to him would have to make everything else pale in comparison. This wasn't a new concept. When I read this, this part blew my mind. Do you remember Abraham and Isaac? Boy, that says it all. God told Abraham, listen, you go sacrifice your, your only son. And Abraham said, look, God, if you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. So he went to sacrifice his son. And as we know that the angel come down and stopped him, it was a test. We would never have a testimony if we didn't go through a test. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom you love, and get into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee. That's in Genesis 22, 2. God was always required. God has always required his children to put him first in their lives. No exceptions. This verse still holds true for us today. Contrary to how some might interpret it, it doesn't give us a license to abandon, neglect, or abuse our families in the name of God. You know, I hear these men say, well, a woman's supposed to submit unto me, and my wife better submit to me or else, or blah, blah, blah. That's not serving in love. That's not serving in love. When you're serving in love and you have that purity, I'm talking a relationship with Jesus Christ where you have access to the Father by your love and commitment to him, then you could be a better husband. Then you could be a better wife. Then you could do what's right for your family. Then you could do what's best at your workplace. But if any provide not for his home, and especially for those of his own household, he that has denied the faith, he is worse than an infidel. Wow. Wow. It simply gives us the directive to remember that God must always come first, always. We must love God with all that we are and trust him with all that we have. Commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust in him, and he shall direct thy paths. Thought for today, to love God is to love what God loves. The more devoted we are to him, the more we prove our love to those around us. Listen, guys, like I said, join the program. This stuff, this is life. This is life. I'm telling you, this is important. This may be the imp most important program that I've ever been a part of. I've been doing this for 12 years, reading through the Bible every single year. Well, 13 years now. And I do this every day. I don't come on here for me. I do this every day for me. I'm reading. I'm doing this on my own. I come on here and do this for you. I do this for you. So I love every single one of you. Listen, you make it a great day in Jesus' name. I'll see you next time. Keep on reading that word.